In this video, I am going to explain the difference between rounding a number cosmetically and rounding a number using an actual mathematical rounding technique. This is the same example that I have used in the previous video, with the only difference being that I have included an extra row in the executive summary, which is used to indicate the pass mark. I am going to change this if statement in such a way that instead of comparing to 50, I am going to compare that cell. Since I am going to use the replicate function, I am going to include dollar sign with the column number so that I can easily replicate. And as you can see, we have the same result. Now, since we are comparing the pass mark, since we are comparing the average mark to the pass mark written in the executive summary, if I change the pass mark to, for example, 45, as soon as I press enter, the passes and fails here should be changed accordingly. However, as you can see, although the pass mark is now being 45, the average mark here is 45. However, it is still saying that it's a fail. The reason for this is that the way that I have rounded these numbers two videos ago was not a mathematical rounding but was just a cosmetic rounding in other words if i highlight those average marks and i add a decimal place from that button you will note that in reality, this average mark is not 45, but for Excel, it is 44.7. And for this reason, Excel is telling us that it's a fail, because it is not greater or equal to that value, to 45. However, as I have already explained, when we are dealing with marks preferably we should deal with marks as whole numbers for this reason it makes sense that 44.7 will be not only written as 45 like this but will also be stored as 45 and when this if statement is executed, it will compare the average mark to number 45 and not to the actual number which previously we saw was 44.7. For this reason, whenever we do the average, we have to round the number mathematically. Rounding of numbers can be done using the round function. I am going to temporarily create a new sheet and I am going to write here a number, for example, 67.35. And in this cell here, I am going to round this value. To round, we can use the round function. So if I write equals round, I open the brackets, 
as you can see, the round function takes two parameters. The first parameter is the number that we are rounding. So in our case, it is this one. The second parameter is the number of decimal places that we want. So if, for example, I write one and close the bracket, it means that I want my number to have only one decimal place. So if I press enter, this value is rounded to 67.4. If, on the other hand, I change the round digits to zero, the number will be converted into the nearest whole number, which in this case is 67. Now, we are going to use this technique of rounding numbers. However, we are going to use it together with the average formula in this sheet. The only difference that you are going to apply here is that when we are going to use the round function, as you can see here, the first parameter, instead of being a cell, it is going to include in it the average formula that is being used to calculate the average. This technique is called nesting functions because we have a function inside another function. So if I go back to my original sheet and I edit this in such a way that first we write round, open bracket, then as the first parameter we have the formula for the average and I write comma zero to indicate that I want to round the number to the nearest whole number. So I don't want any decimal places. And then I close the bracket. If I press enter, as you can see, this has changed to pass because Excel is now understanding that number as 45 and not as 44.7. For completeness, I am going to replicate that function so that now all of these average marks will be rounded mathematically. 